Good afternoon, adventure groupies. I am going to be putting this video together for my wife, Belinda. She's asked me many questions on how the power system works within this coach, so that if she's ever by herself, she knows how to work the inverter, the batteries, the solar, and even the front uh, dashboard of the uh, Coachman Nova. I've also received some emails from individuals that were also interested in how the electrical system works within the Nova and how they can use just the batteries without being on shore power or if they need to, when they need to use the generator. I hope this uh, video is informative to you and thank you again for watching and your support. As we look at the control center within this particular Nova 20C, You'll notice that the Truma system with the heater, you have your Zantrac converter or inverter, I'm sorry, as well as your solar system. And then there's some switches up here. The switch over here is for your solar panel to be on and off, your gray tank, your Wi-Fi, your LP tank, and then if we're in use or store, when you click this button down to store, it turns everything off, batteries, everything. So you have to turn that on for just the electrical to come on. Right now, I'm on battery with the Nova. I've got the lights on. And uh, it's showing that uh, we're at 12.6 volts, and it's cloudy outside today. It's actually raining, so there is no sun. And we'll take a look and see what our Bluetooth state of charge is right now on this particular system before I go any further. Looking at the state of charge on my smart shut, I have my heater running with the fan. We are not plugged in. We're just running off of the 12-volt system. And right now it's telling me I've got about 10 days uh, on my batteries based on the current being pulled right now. I'm pulling about 28 watts and the current is 2.26 amps. As you can see, my time remaining is dropping as my heater is cycling. Looking at the screen inside the unit, if I go to the electrical section, it will show me that my AGC is disabled. That's our automatic generator start system. Once your AGS system is set from disabled to enabled, you have two trigger points. One is based on low voltage, and the other one is for the AC unit load. For the low voltage trigger, as you can see on the screen, it is set to start at 12.2 volts. If the inside of the rig is set up so that you want a constant temperature, let's say of 70 degrees, and the AGS system is enabled, once the inside temperature reaches the set point of the air conditioning, then the generator will start to allow the air conditioning to come on. In regards to the quiet time, if you're boondocking and there's nobody around you, who cares about the 9 p.m. to 5 a.m range. You can have that generator running even in the evening. On the Nova, the generator is actually particularly quiet, but if you're in a campground or close to others, you definitely want to make sure that the generator does not turn on during the quiet time so you don't wake up anybody else around you. As we look at this uh, panel and we go into the electrical side, the AGS system is disabled. By pressing this button, it asks if you would like to enable it. Uh, if you want, hit the enable button. If not, at this point, I'm not gonna enable it, but I cancel it. We also have trigger points. If you press the button, that means that the generator, when it's enabled, will trigger on the low voltage of 12.2 volts. And then the high, uh, the and on the AC system, uh, it would trigger, if it's enabled, for the temperature. And if you go to your temperature screen, you can see that uh, we can trigger it 
by the uh, temperature set point. Right now, the outside temperature or the inside temperature of the coach is 37 degrees. All AC functions for the air conditioning are done at this control panel. It is set up for quiet time to start. Uh, quiet time starts at 9 p.m., meaning it will not start between 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. We also have time at start for volts of 60 seconds start at 12.2 volts. That's 12.2 volts on my solar unit, which I'll show in a second. Time at stop volt is 120 minutes. Stop at 14.2 volts of charge. Minimum generator runtime is 30 minutes. Maximum time would be 120 minutes. And generator start retries is two times. Right now I've got 3.5 hours on my generator. Again, here is the uh, current screen at my Go Power solar charge controller. And I'm running around 12.4, 12.5 volts. With the battery power only on the coach, I'm able to run various items with inside the coach. And those items are my lights and my water pump. So the water pump and my lights are run off 12 volts as well as the awning. Looking at the rear TV, if you swing it out of the way, the TV is plugged into the charging center, which is 12 volts. Right next to it is the 110 volt outlet. Those outlets are not on since I don't have the inverter on, but I do have my TV running off of 12 volts and I can also charge uh, cell phones or let's say iPad devices or smart devices on battery power. I did put black tape over that because my wife does not like that bright light when sleeping. So there's a black tape you can buy that you can just kind of block out that LED lights from bothering you. I did the same thing up here for the antenna system. You can see it's green, but it's not as bright green normally. Another area that you can charge your devices or run fans that run off of the USB cord is here in the back lights, the reading lamps lights. They also allow for charging of your devices. There's one on either side of the coach. There's one on this side as well as this side. So to recap, the television is able to run off of 12 volts. The lights in the coach are 12 volts. The rear couch in the back that goes up and down is run on 12 volts. The water pump is 12 volts. And our refrigerator is also 12 volts. So when it's running, it can run off the batteries. Another item that works off of 12 volts is your max fan. We just happen to have a cover over ours, but your max fan does work with the 12 volts. So you will have circulation within your coach. Your gray tank heater is also run off of 12 volts. So right now my heater is off. If I turn it on to up, it would be on. The uh, Wi-Fi, if you turn that on, will supply power to your Wi-Fi unit. And that is where my Wi-Fi system is at. And it is operational with just 12 volts. The items that cannot run off of 12 volts without a generator or short power is your microwave air conditioning system. The other item that cannot be run off of uh, 12 volts is the induction cooktop system. Now, I'm running the heater right now in the unit. It's on 12 volts with LP gas. The uh, Truma system cannot be set up for electrical when on batteries. It just does not work. So it has to be on gas. And if you press the button, you'll see that if I scroll over to where the... Uh, 
gas cylinder is and the electrical cylinder, it says gas right now. I can turn this knob here and it will switch from gas to electric or it could be a combination of both gas and electric, but right now it's gas. I press it in and I scroll back to the rig and it's set at 68 degrees right now. All Truma heat functions, which is the furnace or the water heater, is done at the Truma unit here in this control panel, not at the digital display that I was just at. You can see that if you press the button, you can choose gas, mixture of gas and electric, then just uh, electric, two times the electrode electricity. And mixture of one or two of the gas and electric or just gas. This Xantrax system, when you press this button here, it will convert the batteries or turn on the inverter so that you can have 110 volts coming from your outlets. There's a set of outlets here on the side where the sink is, as well as behind the TV. There are also outlets located down below behind the passenger seat that you can plug in. With the inverter on, the Xantrex, I'm able to turn on the induction cooktop. In order to uh, turn on the air conditioning system, I will have to turn on the generator and the uh, generator start are right here, start and stop. You need to hold the stop button down to prime the gas pump that's in the generator couple of seconds. You hit the stop button, hold it, and after a couple seconds you hit the start button and that will start the generator. Right here at the bottom of the couch area is your circuit breaker panel. And this is where you have your fuses. It's labeled what fuses to what device. It also has a circuit panel, bre uh, breaker panel layout. So if these breakers are tripped, you'll see that you can reset the breakers. But if you lose power in any of these areas, it could be your fuse itself that's blown. If you happen to lose power inside your rig, there is a outlet out here on the side of the rig where your entrance is, it is 110 volts and it's a GFI system. And if that GI, GFI system is tripped, it will not allow you to have power, 110 volts power inside your rig. So if for some reason you plug up to short power and you still have no power inside, then I would check this device right here and then hit the reset button on the device to reset it and you should have power back on your unit. I would like to leave you with two points from this video. Number one, don't be surprised on a sunny day if your batteries maintain top off charge while you're using your 12 volt system. I had an incident just the other day when I was out on a sunny day using my heater, Truma heater, in the rig and found that the battery or state of charge was still at 100%. And then it dawned on me that the solar panels were keeping up with the charging of the AGM batteries on the rig. So actually the sun was actually supplying the power to heat my rig. Point number two that I'd like to make is that when you are done using the microwave or 110 volt plug for a coffee maker or the induction cooktop, once you are completed using those items, I would turn the inverter off. Reason being is if you don't need 110 volts and you can still do everything with the 12 volt system while boondocking, the 
inverter, when it is on, it consumes energy. So by turning it off, it does not consume any energy from the batteries. So I only use the inverter uh, when boondocking if I have to make coffee or if I have to use the induction cooktop or the microwave. As soon as I'm complete using the 110 volts, I will turn off the inverter. Reason being, the inverter, even in standby mode, consumes wattage, which takes away energy from my batteries. The final point that I'd like to make is, depending on the outside temperature, when you're traveling, you may have to run the air conditioning unit inside the rig or the heater, which means if you run the air conditioning unit, you'll have to have the generator running, which is not a problem. People do that, it's acceptable. In regards to the heater, you'll just have to have the LP on and uh, you can heat your rig during the winter time. These are just some guidelines that I'd like to leave you with. Again, thank you for watching and I hope this video was informative for you.